right from our childhood. We are learning many things about pollution. We have studied earlier also in earlier classes many things about pollution. So in this chapter we will be studying pollution of air and water. So we we many times hear that our elders will be saying that our environment is not what it used to be earlier. So what it used to be earlier is not there today. That means earlier it used to be clean air, lots of trees, lots of greenery, no pollution because less number of vehicles were there in their times, in our grandparents' times. The bullock cars and cycles were used much, not many automobiles were there and there were lots of parks, lots of green trees and there was pesticide free food whereas now we have food which is full of chemicals and pesticides. At that time it was on organic food. So that is what they mean that our environment is not that what it used to be. And then today in newspapers, in internet we hear so many things that the environment is damaging. People are polluting the surroundings, factories are leaving their wastes in the water, newspapers, internet, everybody is giving us news about the environmental damage. So it is all about the falling quality of environment. The environment around us composed of air, water, land. So all these things, when we talk about the quality of all these things, it is decreasing day by day. So that is what it means the environment quality is falling. Since the automobiles, cars, vehicles are increasing, there is increase in pollution. So every day by day, the quality of the air, the environment is falling. So what happens if there is no clean air and water? So if there is no water properly, no clean water, then we may get waterborne diseases, cholera, typhoid. And what happens if there is no clean air? If there is no clean air, we may get respiratory problems, sometimes severe problems like cancer also, then cough, asthma, wheezing, all these problems occur if there is no clean air. So what is air pollution? The definition of air pollution is when the level of contaminants, contaminants are nothing but the pollutants, the things which cause pollution, if the air becomes so much, that air becomes harmful for living beings. The increase in quantity of pollutants will be so much that the air will become harmful for living beings. So then it is called as air pollution. So level of, level of contaminants in air will increase and it becomes harmful for living beings. Then that state is called air pollution. So what are the causes of air pollution? How does the air get polluted? So first thing is exhaust from the automobiles, the smoke emitting from the automobiles. So most of the automobiles, cars, bikes, trucks use fossil fuels, petrol, right? So burning of fossil fuel releases carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. So when we are traveling with petrol vehicles, the smoke emitted from the petrol vehicles contains carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Two are poisonous gas. Carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas, even at low temperatures. And carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So that is how the exhaust from the automobiles is causing air pollution. Next is suspended particulate matters. That is SPMs, suspended particulate matters. So some fine particles remain suspended in the air. Suspended means floating in the air. So some fine particles float in the air. So these floating particles are called suspended particulate matters. So suspended particulate matters. So stone quarries where the stones are crushed into fine powder. There we get lot of dust to be floating in the air, right? And various other factories also contribute to this suspended particulate matters. So the smooth particles, fine dust particles floating in the air all contribute to suspended particulate matter. Next is exhaust from the factories and plants. So you know smoke is emitted from the factories via chimneys, long long chimneys which need the smoke. So this smoke when mixed is, suppose this smoke is containing nitrogen oxide. When this nitrogen ox oxide mixes with the other gases of the air, it is called as smoke. 
smog is nothing but a mixture of smoke and fog. So this smog layer is polluting the environment. The smoke from the factories contain nitrogen oxide. This nitrogen oxide, when mixed with the other gases of the environment, becomes smog. So this is how smog is polluting the environment. And then coal is the main fuel used in factories, the industries around. So this burning of coal produces carbon dioxide and oxides of sulfur. So these oxides of sulfur, nitrogen, form acid rain when mixed with rainwater. So these factories we use coal for the burning purpose. When coal is burned, it gives smoke. That smoke is made up of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. So these oxides of sulfur, nitrogen, all these when mixed with water becomes acid like nitric acid, sulfur oxide becomes sulfuric acid and this causes acid rain, the phenomenon called acid rain. So these oxides when mixed with water become acid, that is how acid rain is caused. So this acid rain is harmful for all the living organisms because it contains lots of harmful chemicals and this is also harmful for monuments. It corrodes the surface of the monument. Suppose any monument is made up of marble, then it corrodes the marble, discolors the marble. So that is how exhaust from the factories and plants is causing air pollution. Next is chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs. So they are the compounds of carbon and halogens. So chlorofluorocarbons are compounds of carbon and halogen. So they are used in mostly in refrigerators. Other than refrigerators, they are also used in pressurized cans. Pressurized cans means in DO sprays, in paint bottles, they are used. So excess level of these chlorofluorocarbons in the environment damages the ozone layer. So we know that above the atmosphere, there is a protective layer of ozone which prevents the harmful UV radiations from reaching the earth's surface. Excess amount of chlorofluorocarbons in the atmosphere damages the ozone layer. So this ozone layer works as a shield and prevents the harmful UV radiations from reaching the living beings, we, animals, etc. So that is how the chlorofluorocarbons are affecting the ozone layer, causing a hole in the ozone layer. So damage to the ozone layer is harmful. So if the ozone layer is damaged, then the UV rays will directly reach up earth and cause any skin diseases or maybe anything harmful to the people, to the organisms on the earth. So that is how the air is getting polluted. Next is effects of air pollution. So the first effect of air pollution is greenhouse effect. So greenhouse effect, what is greenhouse effect and what are greenhouse gases? So greenhouse gases trap the solar radiation which increases the overall atmosphere, overall temperature of the atmosphere. So what happens is, actually greenhouse applies to a nursery where plants are grown. So what happens when solar radiation falls on the earth, some amount of it is reflected back to the earth, earth surface. So when solar radiation falls on the earth, some of the solar rays get reflected back. But in this process of reflecting back, some amount of radiations are trapped by the atmosphere. That means some amount of radiations stay back in the atmosphere. So this phenomenon is used for in nurseries where plants are grown. Suppose if some plants need warmer temperatures, so what they do is they construct a house-like structure which is somewhat greenish in color. So when heat falls into this house and reflects back, it cannot go outside. The heat will be trapped inside that greenhouse. So that is how greenhouse applies in the plants in the nursery. Where they need warmer temperatures for the plants, they construct a house-like structure which is made up of glass. So when solar radiations, heat radiations fall inside the glass and they get reflected back, they do not go back to the sun. They get trapped inside that greenhouse because it is made up of a glass case. So that is a greenhouse effect which applies in the plants. So this effect when we take when we take in concern about the whole atmosphere, it is known as the greenhouse effect. So what happens is when solar radiations fall on the surface of the earth, they get reflected and go back up into the 
the sky. In this process of going back up into the sky, some amount of gases get trapped in the atmosphere. That is, some amount of radiation gets trapped in this atmosphere. And mostly, these gases which are remaining in the atmosphere are greenhouse gases, which are mostly carbon dioxide and methane. So, when solar radiations are falling on the sky and getting reflected back, some amount of heat, some amount of radiation is trapped in the atmosphere. So, this amount of radiation is nothing but the greenhouse effect. So, this is the greenhouse gases are mostly carbon dioxide and methane. So, this greenhouse effect, what is happening? Some amount of radiation, some amount of heat is trapped in our atmosphere, in our surroundings. And it prevents the escape of heat. These greenhouse gases prevent the escape of the heat. So, this, since there is no escape of the heat, and since some of the reflected radiations are trapped in the atmosphere, there is increase in content of warm air. Thereby, the temperatures of the earth are increasing. This is how the increase in the temperatures because of the greenhouse effect is nothing but global warming. So, greenhouse effect leads to global warming. And global warming results in melting of the ice, Himalayan glaciers and some other glaciers which are present on the earth. The ice is melting because of increased temperatures that is global warming. And global warming results in melting of the glaciers on the ice. And global warming results in greater instances of causing of flood. So global warming definitely causes changes in the weather. It increases the temperatures and instances of flash floods are also increased, sudden floods. All this happens because changes in the temperatures caused by global warming. So that is how greenhouse effect leads to global warming. So all this is an effect of air pollution. The increase in amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is because of air pollution. So the next effect is smog. There is increase in the amount of smog around. So what is smog? Smoke plus fog. Together make up smog. Smoke is coming from the factories, from the industries, mixed together with the fog and called as smog. This looks like a hazy surface around us. So sometimes if we get up early in the mornings, we will not be able to see a greater distances because of all a whitish layer smoke covering us. So that is nothing but smoke. So it is like a blanket of haze in the sky. It will be completely covered. Nothing will be visible on the other side. A whitish smoke-like structure will be there. And that reduces the visibility. Flight, flying of aeroplanes will be very difficult in fog. Then traveling of the vehicles on the roads, they will not have much visibility because there will be total whitish colored haze around us. So that is how smog. Fog plus increased smoke results in smog. Next is respiratory disease. Increase in the air pollution leads to respiratory diseases such as any pulmonary disease, cough, wheezing, asthma and sometimes even death, cancer, such type of diseases also come. You see traffic police constables wear nose masks, mouth masks to prevent them from inhaling the poisonous gases of the pollution of the traffic. So that is how respiratory diseases are caused by air pollution. Next is acid rain. So in the atmosphere, due to the burning of fossil fuels, we have oxygen oxides of nitrogen and sulfur in the atmosphere. Because there are lots of automobiles, lots of fossil fuels are burning. There is increase in number of nitrogen oxide and sulfur oxide, carbon monoxide in the atmosphere. When these oxides mix with the water, they become acid. That results in acid rain. So, happens because of oxides of nitrogen and sulfur in the atmosphere. And effect of acid rain on the Taj Mahal. Let's see an example. This Taj Mahal is situated in Agra, right? So, around this Taj Mahal, there are lots of industries. There is also a Mathura oil refinery. And all these industries are releasing a lot of smoke and increasing the number of fog and lot of pollutants are being released. So these pollutants are causing acid rain. Since there are lots of industries around the Taj Mahal, the oxides of nitrogen and sulfur are being released, which are later converting into acid and coming
coming down in form of acid rain. So because of this acid rain, the marble of the Taj Mahal is being corroded, and the color of the marble is also changing because of air pollution. So Supreme Court of India has given an order that only battery operated vehicles should be used around the Taj Mahal and remove all the factories and industries which are in the vicinity of the Taj Mahal that is nearby the Taj Mahal and there is a Kyoto Protocol KYOTO 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 Protocol in the world which there is a Kyoto Protocol in the world which also is which also is formulated to prevent this acid rain so acid rain damages the monuments, damages the buildings, corrodes the surface of the marble of the Taj Mahal, discolors the marble of the Taj Mahal. So that is the reason Supreme Court of India gave an order that all the industries in the vicinity of the Taj Mahal should be removed and moved to other places. And then only battery operated vehicles should be used in the vicinity of the Taj Mahal. So that is how acid rain is damaged caused by that is how acid rain is an effect of air pollution. Next is deforestation. So, if we are cutting the number of trees day by day, what happens? There is decrease in number of trees. If there is decrease in number of trees, there will be increase in number of amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So, if there are less number of trees, then there is increase in carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. All this is happening because of air pollution. Deforestation is also an effect of air pollution, right? So these are the effects of air pollution.